Dick Winters was a lieutenant in the U.S. Army 101st Airborne, 506th Parachute Regiment, Company E, 2nd Platoon. He was the platoon commander and second in command of the company. He joins the U.S. Army in 1942 and goes to Camp Tokoa and trains for two years, as all the others in the Airborne have. His company was pushed to the limits of the human body. At the end of their training, they were just as fit or more than modern day boxers and football players. Finally, the day comes, the day that he has been training for for over two years. The day is June 6, 1944. He climbs into the Douglas C-47 Skytrain and waits for deployment. The engines turn slowly and gradually increase in rotation until the engines were at full blast. The huge aircraft slowly lifts into the air and heads for France. It is early in the morning and most of the men are under his command are tired. He stares out into the black sky, watching, wondering, waiting. One hour later, the aircraft is rocked by German flak. Bursts of black powder spurs all around the aircraft. The light turns red. Everybody stands up and hooks their static cords to the metal wire that runs the length of the aircraft. The lights turn green, and his platoon begin to jump, one by one, out of the aircraft. Finally, he is out of the aircraft. He looks around him. The sky is on fire, with bursts of flak and muzzle flares of from the German AA guns. He is whipped around as he has been dropped too high and too fast. His rifle is ripped off him as well as the rest of his gear. He frantically searches for the ripcord to deploy his parachute. He finally yanks it and down deploying his chute. Once he falls on the ground, he pulls his knife out and heads to the relay point. While searching through the woods, he finds some of his platoon as well as the paratroopers from the 82nd Airborne. They all travel together and stumble upon a German convoy beneath them. Those who have weapons set up an ambush. Once the first bullet is fired, all hell breaks loose. Red and yellow flashes all around. Just shoot in the general direction. Finally, when the fighting stops, all the Germans are dead. Then a sound shakes the countryside, the sound of the U.S. Navy's battleships bombarding the coastline of Normandy. Later in the day, the airborne units are still scattered all over the countryside. Reports come in that the Germans are pounding the beaches with their own artillery, dealing heavy damage to the assaulting troops. Winters is now company commander as the one before him was killed in the jump. He gathers together a band of 13 soldiers and heads out to find and neutralize the threat. Boom! The sound is getting closer. The German 88s are creeping in. Finally, the spot where they're firing from. They look closer, and these are the 150mm cannons. The Germans are distracted, so Winters takes his men around the flank behind the enemy while setting up his MG team on the left flank. The MG team's 30 caliber opens up and the the Germans retreat into the trenches. Then Winters and his men jump over into the trenches behind them and slaughter them. Once they make their presence, the Germans start running in the opposite direction to the opposite side of the field, making them easy targets for the men in the trenches. The Germans are shot down one by one, falling to the ground. They start to work their way around to the back right hand flank where the gun batteries were. One by one, the four guns are knocked out of action. They They had brought TNT but had no way to light it. So Winters simply took a German stick grenade and dropped it into the barrels with the TNT. Once all four guns were knocked out, they retreated back to the command point. On his way out, Winters had swiped some axes, maps, and had every gun position in Normandy. They had killed 50 Germans with only one casualty. One of his friends took a shot to the butt and was sent to a recovery center. Winters was recommended for the Medal of Honor for his actions. 
but received the Distinguished Service Cross, the second highest medal that can be awarded to a, ser a soldier by the U.S. Army, the Medal of Honor being the first. After that day, he was officially promoted to company commander and lived to fight the rest of the war.